That was pretty awesome. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. This is DDP with the Dallas Prospect, and we are talking about the Mavericks 107-105 thriller against the Denver Nuggets at the AAC yesterday. Kyrie Irving, I, we'll, we'll get to the shot, but my goodness, the difficulty, the degree of difficulty in that final shot unbelievable and that's exactly why you have a Kyrie Irving on your team like just that ability to make that kind of shot that was not the drawn up play that was just what they had to improvise with on the fly and other than Luca there's no one else I mean on the Mavericks certainly no one else that could make that shot Jokic obviously has a, a very incredible knack for making these crazy shots as well but goodness so let's get to it here. Dallas had an opportunity coming into this game to move up. They've been stuck at the eight seed for a minute. They were able to move up thanks to Phoenix getting drummed in Milwaukee earlier on. So Dallas had an opportunity against the team that has 11 and one post all-star break in the Nuggets. Basically the Nuggets limped into the all-star break on a skid came out and have been just repeatedly punching everybody in the mouth in the Western conference that did raise some questions about whether or not they would be able to you know, handle this. Essentially, Dallas dealing with the heavyweight. That, that recent loss to OKC after another little three-game winning streak kind of raised a little bit of questions here. It was the first time they had lost with Gafford in the starting lineup, and you're saying, okay, the Nuggets are the best team in the NBA, I would say. Two in the West, I think. And they might. I don't remember if they were actually one going into the game. But you looked at this and said, this is a real, real test. And if Dallas is going to show some grit and determination to stand up and like really assert themselves down this final stretch of what now 18 games remaining, this is going to have to be one of those statement games. And uh, you know what? They largely did that because Dallas did something I did not anticipate them doing in this game. They didn't just play bully ball. They thrived at bully ball like against the Nuggets. Dallas gets 21 offensive rebounds in this game. Like that that in itself is kind of mind-boggling. It's the most offensive rebounds the Nuggets have allowed in a game this year and when you consider the fact that Dallas got 59 boards on the game, won the offensive glass 21 to 6, won the total rebounding game 59 to 37. Goodness gracious that allowed dallas to make up for the fact that they were a putrid nine of 35 from beyond the arc only luca and Kyrie made threes for dallas in this game that's insane that's a game that dallas would lose 99.9 times out of 100 don't ask me how you get a 0.9 in this hypothetical scenario i'm just gonna go with it dallas would lose this game pretty much every single time if their shot was that poor from beyond the arc instead honestly they win by two and they win at the buzzer it shouldn't have even come down to that though because dallas was in a situation where with just under seven minutes to play i think it was like six and a half minutes maybe 650 650 sounds right six minutes 50 seconds left in the game dallas had a 13 point lead and you're saying like okay we're, we're in control right now. Certainly not job done. Nuggets can go and take a game whenever they want it. They are damn good at doing that. And they basically did it in this game. But you're looking at it and you're like, all right, sweet. And then you get this strange little moment where Dallas, basically with the ball sitting in the backcourt, Kyrie just sitting there kind of huddled over the ball. Luca sitting in an awkward like pick position, basically just standing guard with a, a relaxed pick, essentially in front of Kyrie and Dallas just kills 20 seconds of clock 20 seconds come off the clock as we're just waiting to do something with the possession. And it's like, okay, we're going to try like utilizing the clock to your advantage. Yeah, that's cool. I, I don't have a problem with that generally, but I felt like you were a little too passive there. 20 seconds is a lot of time when you got a 24 second shot clock. And I don't think this is a, an opponent you can just cruise with. If you have the momentum, if you have the advantage, don't play quick. Don't play out of your comfort. 
But if you're playing not to lose, I think you're going to lose. And they damn near do because from six minutes, 50 seconds until Luca hits a three with 24.2 seconds left, Dallas managed what four points? That's not good. <laughs> That's not good at all. Meanwhile, Denver did what Denver does. They turned it on. You got Murray making shots. You got Caldwell Pope making shots. They just chipped away. Part of that is they cranked down defensively. Uh, but part of that was just great shot making. And now, because you've been a little bit passive and because you've been trying to play not to lose, you're suddenly in a situation where it's like, okay, now what? What are we going to do now? And, you know, when Denver tied it, they, they end up taking a lead on a Murray three. And then Luca gets the one back right back on an inbound play with 24.2 left. Um, that sets you up to like, okay, we're tied again, but Denver has the last shot if they want it. Here's the thing. I don't believe this game should have come down to a Kyrie game winner. I think Dallas should have won this game. I'm not saying they would have won by 10, but I think Dallas should have won this game by a couple of scores. I think this should have been a five or six point game probably. I think Dallas kind of shot itself in the foot a little bit. And even then, it takes Denver making, I think, a mistake. Jamal Murray with, he has 24.2 seconds left as this possession starts. They're getting the last shot to win or to go to OT. And he gets a clean look. High pick and roll with Jokic. He pulls up at about the elbow and he just misses it. But he takes the shot early. The shot is there. He's got a good look, but there's five seconds on the clock as he pulls up for that shot. When you're playing for the last shot of the game, I don't want a shot that early. And maybe part of that is Denver just assuming like, you know what? When we want to go win a game, we go do it. It's the confidence that like, okay, I got the shot. This is my, this is my look. I'm taking it. And then part of that's probably the assumption that even if I don't make this and we got to play defense, we're damn good defensively. Like they're not going to get a, they're not going to get a clutch bucket on us as time's expiring because we're going to take Luca away. And Dallas is not a strong team when it comes to drawing up plays on inbound. These end of game situation, drawn up plays for Dallas rarely go well. It seems so they probably looked at all that and said like, yeah, just go for it. You got it. Take it. It didn't work. Thankfully they don't get, they don't get the board. Uh, they don't get the bucket or the board. Tim Hardaway Jr. comes away with the ball and just starts making a beeline towards half court. And I swear, kid must have been jumping out of his skin trying to call for that that timeout because it's like, as soon as I saw Hardaway with the ball, just a bolt of lightning, I was like, my God, he's going to chuck it from half court on a sprint and we're going to go to overtime. And uh, fortunately, it doesn't come to that. We get the timeout uh, with like 2.8 seconds left and you draw up the play. Kyrie curls around the baseline. Luca. They, they set it up where it would have been a difficult step back three for him. So many times we've seen Dallas take that. But Luka clears out um, as Kyrie. First, Kyrie kind of surprises me. He does get a switch where Jokic is on him. But Kyrie starts to dribble the ball towards the elbow, taking it towards that high post. And Luka dives down for a second. I think Kyrie is going to whip the ball to Luka for a contested shot at the rim. That's where I thought that play was going once Kyrie put it on the deck. But that's not where it goes. Jokic does a great job sticking with Kyrie. And then Kyrie just makes one of those effing shots. One of those shots that only a handful of guys in the league can really make. Certainly in that situation. Certainly against that kind of defense. Because Jokic played that as well as you could possibly play that. He has to go southpaw, does Kyrie. He has to go with the lefty. I don't know if it's a push shot or a hook. It looked more like a push shot to me. Doesn't really matter. It's a 20 foot left hand push shot from the elbow on the run. And it's just so pretty. Probably one of, if not the best difficult shot makers in the NBA today is Kyrie Irving. And it pulls Dallas's buns from the fire. They escape 107, 105 get a huge victory, move up to seventh in the West right now. Denver now sitting at number two. And look, say what you want, man. Maybe Dallas should have put this game away earlier. Maybe they really squandered a lot of opportunity. 
But Dallas did a lot of good things in this game too. Like they were for a change up for this game. They were ready to meet it. It wasn't just starting the game with a 10, three run. It was also, I'll give credit here. I feel like this was largely a good performance from Jason Kidd. Uh, you know, we've seen him scale back Tim Hardaway's minutes recently. Hardaway's had a couple games where you're like, okay, maybe he's breaking out. Even that OKC loss was like, all right, maybe he's kind of breaking out a little bit. But Kyrie doesn't, or uh, excuse me, Hardaway doesn't play a lot of minutes in this game. I think he ends up with 15 minutes. Not only that, he only attempts three shots. Normally you give him 15 minutes, he's going to take 11 shots, it feels like. He's got him and Jaden Hardy have that same wiring the difference is i have a lot more faith in Jaden hardy to to do something with that right now and tim hardaway jr only takes three shots in the game just one point and that's kind of the crazy thing about it is like okay he only played five minutes in the second half too by the way so really responding well to his struggles and just understanding like this isn't a funk this is now an extended rut maybe part of it is he just has to play his way out of it but we can't let him just keep digging, 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 digging until he eventually hits pay dirt. We have to be strategic in how we implement and impl and deploy him in these lineups. Now, I know a lot of people have contention with Maxi and him being in in that final moment, him being in in your closing lineup. I get it, man. Maxi has lost a step defensively. He's never been a guy that's going to give you many boards. He does give you, what, four boards in this game? Yeah, four boards, 21 minutes, 0 of 3 from the field, all three of them threes. One of them, the ugliest damn shot I think I've seen, um, certainly in recent history with him. I can't think of anything much uglier than that, how, how long he pushed that three. But even still, it's like, I get that Maxi doesn't give you much. And people are going to look at that and say like, dude, between Hardaway and Maxi, you gave up like 36 minutes to produce a single point. That's bad. I will agree with you 100%. That is bad. But even though you had out of Lively in 23 minutes, he gives you 14 and eight, seven of eight from the field. Lively, especially in, in this kind of matchup against Jokic, dude, Lively doesn't have near the the weight the girth if you will to battle with Jokic and he was getting abused a little bit in that and part of that's just Jokic is Jokic man he's gonna do that to most anybody but it was also the fact that like that's just a tough draw for him he is a rookie he is a guy that is lean as can be so you have to take those things into consideration that being the case Maxi's not the worst draw you can have. It at least gives you some size and stoutness that you need. And you know what? Maxi in the second half, give him credit, at least a little bit of credit defensively uh, for dealing with Porter Jr. Because Dallas was having a hard time at times with Porter Jr. in this game. And yeah, he still gets you 20 points and seven boards. A, a nice game from Michael Porter. But I felt like Maxi did about as well defensively as anybody did against Porter in this game. So there was strategic reason for it. I'm not saying it's a perfect thing. I'm not saying like, ah, oh, yeah, Maxi put some respect on his name. No, not saying that. But I am going to say like, for what your options were in contending with some of these situations, it was about the best you could do. And you got just enough out of it for it to work out. So take that into consideration if you can. Now, again, I, I was I was complimenting Jason Kidd's defensive uh, game plan in this. It, it's no secret that Denver wants to get Jokic in the high post and let him initiate the offense from there. And Dallas knew what they wanted to do, and they made him work for it. And they even took it away to an extent. Like, yeah, Jokic ends up with 16 points, 11 boards, and 7 assists. A near triple-double. That's... Still, 16 points and 11 boards in a in a primetime game like this against... And now I don't, I don't even say, like, yeah, Luka's an MVP candidate technically, but nobody's talking about him anymore. Once Dallas hit that skid, everybody stopped talking about him, and they haven't listened since. I don't, I don't even care about it at this point. At this point, I let it go because there's so much bigger things to talk about. Even still, this was a big situation here, a big stage, and Luka outplays him. And Kyrie 
stuffs the stat sheet. Brilliant game from Kyrie. But what I liked was how Dallas really made Jokic work for everything he was getting. Like they were fronting in the high post. Kyrie I, I poked the ball away from him, you know, at the very start of the game to set up that 10-3 run to get the bucket, um, to basically the transition alley-oop to get that 10-3 edge at the start. And then I think he was fronting him in the high post a lot after that, like just pestering, making him work, making it annoying. Now, Jokic still stuffed the stat sheet pretty well, but even still, it was good seeing Dallas play physical, playing bully ball, and winning with this kind of edge, being able to win the, the boards, the battle of the boards by 20 plus boards and nearly triple them in offensive glass. That is stupendous. That's how you overcome an abysmal three point shooting night. I said earlier that Luca and Kyrie were the only Mavericks to hit threes. At least I think I said that. I definitely thought it. Um, that, that's insane. Uh, what, what did we get from three point shooting on that? Washington was 0 of 4. He is, he's hurting right now in terms of his offensive game, but 31 minutes again, he still plays good defense was still a plus seven and he gives you only four points, but 11 boards, three assists. You want something offensively, but you'll settle for that right now. If that's what you can get, uh, Derek Jones jr. Again, in the starting lineup, nine points, eight boards, good defense. Um, only four of 11 from the field, 0 of three from three. Obviously, you'll hear a lot of talk of these guys being over from the, the field. Exum only got one three, passed up a couple other opportunities that I thought he was being too passive at times. And Jaden Hardy does get four minutes. I honestly kind of forgot until I was just now looking at the box score to see that he actually got some time there. Um, gets two points at the line. I would like to see a little bit more Hardy, but I understand in this case why it is what it is. And um, yeah, just the, the the game plan for Dallas felt solid. It felt like the team responded and was ready for this game. It felt like they had a lot of mental toughness to overcome adversity. Definitely an opportunity for things to go south. And instead, they stood up. Even when Denver took the lead from them on that Murray three, it would have been so easy, so easy just to be like, ah, oh, damn, we let this get away. But no, they they come right back. Luca gets an immediate catch and shoot inbound three bucket. Um, and that sets you up. And then they get the stop defensively, whether it was them or just Jamal Murray going early and missing the bucket, whatever. They had to get the board. And obviously that was a big narrative for the day. And then they are able to execute, even if it's on a miraculous push slash hook shot, they're able to execute and get and get it done. Like take defeat from the jaws of victory. Wait, flip that. Flip it to the good version. Take victory from the jaws of defeat. Because if this game went to overtime, I'll be honest with you, I don't think they were going to hang on. I think once they went into, I think once Denver battened down the hatches in those final six plus minutes and Dallas went into a much more conservative, like kill the clock, just trying to kind of milk the game away. I think once you pulled back and Denver buckled down, I think you were really in trouble there. And if this game had gone to overtime, I don't know the Dallas would have been able to turn it back on and pull away to the extent that they needed to. So definitely some trouble there. I look at this game for Dallas and I, and I'm, I'm pleased. It's not perfect. The Kyrie thing makes the overall impression overall much different, but I think this is a game Dallas definitely was for, for this one game. They definitely won this game. They should have won it a little more convincingly, in my opinion. But in the end, you're going to take what you can. And sometimes winning with something like this, winning with the the jolt and juice of the, of the miracle can give you a little something more that you can carry with you. Sometimes it might feel like, oh, that's a lucky shot. But I also think sometimes guys have that feeling of invincibility that kind of starts. Like, look at what we're able to do here. Look at how... We're in this improbable moment. It looks like everything is going against us, but we pull it out of the fire. I go with a lot of metaphors, I'm realizing now. A lot of analogies. We pull it out of the fire, and now we're going to ride this momentum because suddenly we're looking at this and saying, like, you know, two weeks ago, we all thought we were dead in the water. I was talking about this team looking like they were suddenly inexplicably dead in the water. The fire Jason Kidd stuff is everywhere. It's deafening. And yet... Kyrie Irving says after the game that 
really the, and the first guy that ran to him after that shot. And he said after the game as well, that Markeith Morris, while he doesn't play much is actually vital to the leadership of this team. The actual quote here, um, he said two weeks ago when they were struggling and everything looked like it was falling apart, Markeith was the one that told him, hey, man, we're going to be OK. And he was talking about building resilience, perseverance and all of that. And you can say because it has turned out that way that like, yeah, man, that's this team has rallied. This team has taken what looked like was a season slipping away from them and they have built upon it to really Really, at least, I mean, th there's a lot of work to be done, right? They're seventh in the West. They're still in the play in picture. But if you're going to move up, if you're going to make a push to get where you need to be, this is the moment that you have to start making that. And this is about as big of a statement as you can make. The only other Denver loss post all star break was against the Suns in overtime. So the fact that you're chasing Phoenix and you were just able to match Phoenix's, Phoenix's best statement win post all star break. I think is uh really good it says a lot about this team and you know if, if you're going to try and do anything you can do i can do better you better be able to back it up so them being able to do that here i think goes a long way for them on that let's see yeah mark mark uh gets a lot of love and credit from other guys on this team it's not just Kyrie. it's luca it's He's very popular, apparently, within the team. So when I spoke two weeks ago saying like, oh, if Markeith is like your locker room leader, yeah, he's got that that tough guy presence. He kind of reminded me of like a James Johnson um, was how I perceived him previously. So I, I looked at it and I was like, man, even of the, the Morris twins, that's not the one that I would have been more excited about, even though obviously we have our sordid history with that one uh, with Marcus. But you know what? I take it back. He's already he's already paid more dividends in terms of that tough guy locker room leader presence than James Johnson did for Dallas. So, okay. Withdrawn. I withdraw that point. I owe you an apology, Markeef. Turns out I wasn't very familiar with your game. So, uh, talking a little bit here about this, uh, let's go into a little bit of depth here. Kyrie after the game. Thanks. Uh, thanks Luca for putting him in position for that game winner. He points out that he wouldn't have gotten that shot off without Luca tying the game. Luca hitting the three with 24.2 seconds left. Um, he was unbelievable tonight and making a lot of clutch plays, getting to the free throw line. So I give a lot of credit to him and getting us in the position to allow me to get that game winner at the end. Love that response because, yeah, the two of them combined for 61 points. Uh, Luca goes for 37, 9, and 3, also two steals. Kyrie, I said earlier, filling up the stat sheet, 24 points. Seven boards, nine assists, three steals, and a block. Love to see it. Love to see it. What I really love about that, I mentioned how Denver was really blitzing Luka, um, trying not to let him just get the, the two-man game with Lively and just feed these guys easy alley-oops all day. And so Luka's assist numbers were down. But Kyrie said, hey, that's why I'm here. This is why you have two guys that can run the point at an all-star caliber level, at a superstar caliber level, and uh, make something happen. So 61 points from your dynamic duo there. Probably, health when healthy, the best backcourt in the NBA. And I know people make these, these kind of statements all the time. I know that there's somebody that's going to try and debate that. There always is. But for what it's worth, pound for pound, the difficulty of shot-making ability, the clutch gene that both Kyrie and Luka have, it's really hard to, to argue against it. You can talk about defense if you want, I guess, but offensively, the best backcourt in the league, in my opinion. And I don't, for what it's worth, I don't, I don't know how you really argue that much, but I know somebody somewhere will for sure. So love it, love it, love it. Um, let's see. I'm just looking over my notes here. If anything else I haven't already talked about, I think that pretty much covers the basis there running through some other numbers. So I mentioned, uh, Derek lively with 14 and eight, Derek Jones, jr. Nine and eight Gafford also has eight and six. He was, he was a starter in this game, a little bit more ho-hum for him. We've seen a lot of big games from him recently in terms of his boards and his, uh, scoring, but a little bit more ho-hum here, even still solid numbers, especially when combined with Lively's. uh, PJ Washington struggled. 
And uh, Hardaway and Maxi combining for a single point in like 35, 36 minutes. That's wild. That is, that's crazy. Like you can't really win doing that very often. And yet here you go again. They find a way to do that. So I've, I'm really hoping the team can ride this momentum. I'm trying to see here. I want to look up. Oh, here's Luca post game talking about the Kyrie shot. Um, Luca told by Landon Thompson, uh, Landon Thomas about Kyrie giving Luca all the credit for putting him in that position. Luca says, no, no, that's all about him. That shot's unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. And I think we know that Luca couldn't believe it because both Maxi and Luca, when the Kyrie shot drops, are like clutching their heads, like, what? What just happened? Luca's like practically dropping to his knees and cackling just because he's insane now watching that shot drop. It's like it's so great in that situation when it gets to be your team pulling out the improbable win. And Luca's probably thinking, like, yeah, I know I got Kyrie on my team. I know what he's able to do, and that's awesome. But being able to see somebody else make that kind of shot to win a game in the clutch is just so, so great. So absolutely love to see it. Um, you know, Luca is talking afterwards saying like, I don't think people realize how tough of a shot that is with the offhand again, the Southpaw, the left hand. And he said he hasn't seen a shot like that before and doesn't think he'll see it again. That seems a little bit hyperbolic, but, uh, the guy is special, which is the sentiment Luca was going with. And I absolutely agree. Shout out to TGK pointing out the lineup of Luca, Kyrie, Derek Jones Jr., PJ, and Gafford in 61 minutes is a plus 34.4. Coming into the game, it was a plus 28. So the defensive rating continues to improve for this team. This this particular lineup, while we still haven't had a huge sample size of it, is very solid on the plus minus side of things. What it's able to give Dallas in terms of the length, the athleticism, and defense really speaks volumes. Anytime you got Luca and Kyrie, you're going to get the offense that you need. It's really, can you make those other pieces fit? If they can figure out a little bit of the offense for PJ and get more out of him, this has an, an opportunity to be deadly. We haven't seen a lot of games, big offensive games yet from PJ. I think it will come. I'm not saying he's going to be like, oh, the third man and the three headed monster. I hate how every team thinks they got to have a three headed monster now. Uh, cause that's just not the case. I, I don't see PJ that way. No, no disrespect to him. I think he's a very nice piece. Definitely can be a, a key piece in what you're building, but I don't think he should be put in the position or perception of that guy. So having that ability to get more out of him, more like what he usually gives you, I think will go a long way in, uh, in making this team outright dangerous. But right now they are still a team who on a given night can go toe to toe with just about anybody. I think that pretty well. Yep. Yep. That wraps up my notes here. So what did you think? Let me know. Is this a game that Maverick fans is? First of all, is this the win of the year for the Mavericks? Is this the best win of the season to date for the Mavericks? Do the Mavericks ride this momentum? Are they able to put all the, all the drama and everything behind them? You know, they got going a little bit after they responded from that two-week stretch of how bad things were. I saw you a one-week stretch, but it was two weeks ago. They got, they got bad. They got kind of good again. Then OKC beat them. Uh, and, you know, they didn't have Luka in that game. That's true. And we we know about the whistle for, for Shea and all of that. But still, okay, you lost to basically the best team in the West, one of the three best teams in the West. Uh, and now you had to go against the Nuggets. You did have Luca back, but how were you going to be able to respond? Were you going to be able to keep momentum or were you going to fall into another mini skid at least? To me, the situation, the moment, this was key for Dallas and they answered. Answered twice, in fact. Shouldn't have had to answer a second call, but they did. So for what it's worth, that's pretty sweet. Let me know in the comments. Like the video, subscribe to the Dallas Prospect. And until next time, guys, remember, every legend was once a prospect. Peace.